welcome to the second episode of the Five Leg Show. On our first episode, we were previewing the Uganda Cricket Cranes team to Malaysia. Um, thank God they did well and they were able to win four out of their five games. And in the process, we are being crowned champions of the events. They qualified for the Division Three tournament will be later this year. And on the final day, they were lucky to help them qualify for the same tournament. Today on the show, we are trying to review the show, recap, uh, see where the team did well, where we need to improve, and where do we go from here. And today we have some very interesting guests, uh, apart from the former Cricket Cranes captain, Davis Karashani. We have one of uh, the Cricket Cranes number one fan on Twitter, Jackie Daisy, uh, former Australia, no, no, not Australia, former Ugandan player. No, not former. He's still eligible to play. Right? <laughs> yeah, he still is. Yeah, he still has a chance to play. Uh, Ugandan international. He's uh, been here for a while. Mitch Horrocks, welcome to the show. Thank you. Mr. Kwese Alan Semakula, welcome to the show. Um, just a brief intro about the gentleman. Mitch plays for Tornado B in Uganda. He's previously played for the main Tornado. But when he came back, he found his former team somewhere. He wanted to continue with them. <laughs> But Mitch is doing some interesting work in Uganda here in a village called Chinya. Kinyantari. Kinyantari in Fukoto. He's bringing clean water to the homes there. Alan, of course, uh, plays for Avengers in the league and Div 2. Uh, we are rivals. We, we lost to Avengers in the first two of the season. But that was uh, unfortunate. Jackie loves uh, cricket. Jackie, tell us a bit how, how you fell in love with this game. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, well, um, I got to know about cricket about a year ago uh, through a friend of mine who still plays cricket. Uh, she plays for Tornado B, I think, the ladies team. And she introduced me to cricket by supporting her team. I think I had no choice but to be a Tornado B fan. <laughs> yeah, and through her I got to learn the dynamics of cricket, to understand the game from the people. For someone who hasn't played it in high school, it's a bit tricky yeah, to understand the game. And because of how I was able to learn and understand and become a convert eventually. <laughs> yeah, so for me, it's, it's been interesting. It's one of those fancy games, I would say, <laughs> because aside of tennis, it's one of the games that have a lot of discipline. Someone on Twitter was complaining last week that uh, they find the game boring. Davis was not happy with this one. Neither was I. So some of us, call you. of course, when you're naive, you would say something like that. But eventually, when you put your mind to understanding the game and have interest in it, yeah. you definitely get to like it. A pleasure, pleasure to have you, Jackie. We hope you, you enjoy the rest of the show. So, guys, we're going to talk about the tournament proper. We, I mean, you're going to manage to. We are crowned champions, and we are now back in Team Three. Um, some of the highlights of the tournament, uh, Davis, what were some of the highlights uh, in Malaysia? Uh, well, uh, of course, morning to you and uh, all the, the viewers out there, but uh, straight to the point, I felt uh, the biggest highlight for, for me as an individual was uh, the, the over the crochet ball uh, to win the game for Uganda in a very decisive game against, uh, at that time, the Tepo leaders who were Denmark. I felt uh, him stepping up to the plate, taking the, the ball at that time, and executing a job, uh, I thought that was amazing. You would not get better than that. Mitch? Can't argue with that. I think that over was, uh, was a tournament-defining over for the boys um, and for the captain to lead in a way. Uh, his first over of the game in such a precious situation, um, you know, that was just, yeah, definitely the highlight and then the catalyst for being promoted to Division 3. I like that. It's the same thing, you can't argue with that. His first over of the game, trying to defend very, very, a very, very little score. It was amazing. And him being the captain and taking up the taking up the ball by the hole. It's amazing. I'll I'll be different from you guys for despite the loss to Malaysia, we I mean that's if we had lost by a big match things would have been very different for us. I mean, it eventually came down to Netranet and it was a Netranet tournament. Then Mark would have been out of it if, I think, Bermuda or someone and just, uh, I think Malaysia would have then defended their runs. In a uh, certain number of yeah. they would have gone through. So for us, even if we lost the Malaysia game, the nine run rules wasn't actually so bad. We could take that apart from anything else. Jackie, something that stood out for you? 
Well, I wouldn't be far as much because the game against uh, Denmark was really the highlight for Uganda in the whole tournament. And the fact that Roger was able to, to have control in a moment like that was really impressive for us. And um, I would say that they, they all needed the win. Yeah, and for me the highlight is us going to Division 3, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's something we, we, we all wanted, yeah, yeah? and we, I don't think the players are ready to stay in Division 4. No, not <laughs> The early mornings, were they happy with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, some were, some weren't, because um, of course when you love a game, you would try to be as much awake to be able to watch it and in the end it pays off. How is it when you follow the game online and you're in office and people are looking at you and they're wondering <laughs> what yes. someone is trying um, to ask for something like this wait. <laughs> that happened I think against Jersey and Denmark actually at that moment when we were waiting for what Roger would do and you're trying to follow it online and I kept tweeting about it and I'm like why isn't why isn't the game on Super Sport? You're able to see the reactions, the faces and everything. So it was a bit interesting because my colleagues will ask me, what are you doing? What is that? What are they doing? What moment is it? And you can't get the right words to tell them what's happening because you want to see what's going on. Yeah. So it was it was interesting. It was a moment of adrenaline, I would say. <laughs> yeah, let's let's own. talk about Roger's leadership. I mean uh, even when Davis was captain, he used to you know, step up. He took the two catches uh, when I guess Namibia to win us the top TT in the championship. He was man of series in, uh, in Bermuda. I mean, uh, in previous times, our leaders have been able to step up. And, I mean, Roger has bowled two decisive overs uh, the one against, uh, I think, Jersey and uh, Denmark. Is he, is he, has he grown into the world from uh, when he took over in Rwanda, when he took over from Davis in Rwanda? Do you think, Mitch? Yeah, I think so, and I think um, when you've got a when you've got a captain that is a, is you know dynamic captain like like Davis is like Roger is that can contribute the whole game whether it's with the ball with the bat or in the field. Those captains they want to be that person that says, okay, we live and die by my decisions, you know? and that's that's a very strong captain. Obviously, you look at international cricket; um, most of the captains in international cricket are batsmen. That's just how it is. A bowler very rarely because I think at that international level, it's hard to be completely, um, I would say, objective and, you know, knowing when to bring yourself on, that kind of thing. Um, so we don't see that much in international cricket. But I think at our level, it's very important that, you know, Roger steps up as a captain and, you know, leads from the front. And he definitely did that and he showed that he wants to be that person that leads from the front. Yeah. Uh, then uh, the big mention of Roger and uh, Franco and Freddy being the standout players, but there's some guys there who, who put in shifts that you know haven't had that much of a mention. Uh, Davis, who do you highlight in that team? Who, who's been there, and done some you know some background work that not everyone has been able to, to see. I think for me, uh, two guys especially stand out for me, uh, especially the guys that were in the, the team that uh, got relegated last year. Uh, for me, Ham Kayondo and uh, Brian Masaba. The fact that uh, they went to, to Malaysia, knowing they'd come off a very bad tournament uh, back here in Uganda, they knew that they were literally the, the batters that were going to have to do the job. They were, they were going to have to step up, get to the plate and do the business. They knew Roger and uh, Cessas were never going to have to have the, bad, the, the burden of getting runs to the side alone. So I felt uh, Ham Kayondo, his, his knocks were very, very important. They were patient knocks, which is what Uganda needed. I felt uh, Brian Masaba, him uh, being asked to bat at number four, uh, of course, because Shazad had to pull out a filter, they, they both stepped up the plate and uh, they, they accounted for themselves. All right, Alan, who do you think is up something? Don't mention Brian. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> not just. I agree with, with Davis. I think it was Ham for me and Tenet Wise. Ham, definitely, he batted well. Um, we were a bit unlucky. The openers never stayed for long. All the games. I think apart from the game against uh, Bermuda where he had a long partnership for uh, Roger. Yes, exactly. After that, but he, still he was one down. Yeah, yeah, he was one down. Every time he came on one down and, and he played a decent, decent innings all the time. He has a 60 somewhere, a 50 somewhere, I think. It was very decent. And his, as, as, as David said, his partnership with Brand 
Corey scored us somewhere into the game. Then Kenneth Weiswa was his first tournament. I've always, I've always believed that boy has a lot of talent and he showed it. The games he got a chance to, with both with the bat and a few of us, all very decent. Very, very decent. I think it's a, it's a very, it was a very, very nice tournament for him going forward. Mitch, who impressed you, Amar? Besides the, 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 the three main yep. guys, who were impressed you? Apart from the guys mentioned, I think uh, Fred Achalam's contributions were yeah, match winning because he picked up one or two men of the matches. One, one, one man of the matches, yeah. And uh, and even in that first game against Malaysia, he was keeping us alive. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's a, I think, exactly. And I think he had a, maybe a lot of uh, critics to, to begin the tournament. You know, people saying, where is he going to bat? He can't bat any higher than, you know, eight or nine. But I think he showed that he is ready to play at that level when that was his first tournament as a young guy. It's very impressive that a guy on his first assignment can actually perform under pressure. It's something that you can't really coach. Uh, you can't coach that natural ability to perform under pressure. So I think his uh, contributions and also his contributions with the gloves, keeping in Malaysia is not easy. And then those, you know, pressure situations. Keeping, uh, 30 overs of spin in exactly. the and, and those and things. And, uh, yeah, and those, uh, those very pressure, very high pressure situations in that last over that Roger was bowling, you know, to make sure you, you're collecting those balls, cleaning. Is, you know, we, we think it's a simple thing, but in those like pressure moments, yeah. it's very easy to, you know, let it get to you. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. Yeah. and he definitely um, yeah, did himself. Uh, Jackie, right. who, who impressed you among this, the, the 14 cricket players? Uh, Chris Davis is playing. <laughs> I'll have to go with someone else. But well, for me, the tournament, I will go with him. Besides him, uh, okay. Besides, besides him, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not biased. Okay, I think for me, I will go with him first because in the partnerships he had, he was able to score uh, quite a number of runs for the team. And it goes to say that when you have someone, you 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 understand. You know the moment we you're able to perform as well as you can. Uh, aside of him, I'll go with Roger for for trying to be there for the team in moments where you, you don't expect someone to exert a lot of control when you're under pressure and you know you want to win. Yeah, so for me, it'll be Roger. And, and... Oh, interesting. But we had very close. Most of the wins were very close wins. So I don't know what to say. I don't want to read too much in how well we did in Malaysia, but we need to look how we build on that and then move forward. Some of the level of cricket wasn't as good as what we saw in the Division 3 and it begs to, it may be deceptive for us to think that, oh, oh you know what, we, we will be as good as we think we are. But uh, we qualified with Denmark, we we'll now meet uh, the USA, Singapore, Singapore uh, Kenya and, and, and Oman. How, going forward how do we do this how do we how do we how we how do we, how do we go forward as a, as a nation uh, personally i feel uh well uganda right now has picked up momentum of course winning the tournament regardless of what the standout was like i felt uh, they picked up momentum uh, anyone that has followed what divisions would always you know the game's always very very close so for me i wouldn't worry too much about the results for me i'm very glad that we won the tournament and progressed with division three uh but again i think uh Uganda, as I said, is in a very good place. That uh, when you look at the 14 guys that travel, and then you add in an extra seven to ten guys, I feel uh, the squad is big enough. Uh, it offers a lot of options and uh, resources for us to use. So I feel uh, if we practice well, go to Rwanda for the T20 qualifiers, probably do well there. I think we can build up momentum leading us into the division. Mitch, how do we, from a background of coming from a background that is properly structured in terms of pathways? How does Uganda be on this? I think the most important thing for the team now is to not feel like, okay, we've made it there, but to feel like, okay, this is the first step in a place that we feel we should be. Uh, so I think this tournament should be seen as a great success, but let's work even harder. You know, I think um, you might be able to speak better than, than most in the fact that sometimes there's that ability to, to kind of relax into that uh, mindset that we've, we've made it there rather than actually think, okay, guys, yeah, we have to have to strive for more. If we believe that we're a Division Two team, you know, going to Division Three, then getting knocked back down to four is just as bad as, you know, what we've been before. So I think, you know, having tournaments up until that time is very good. So learning how to, you know, survive those pressure situations. 
and uh, yeah, just training as much as we can and working on those very small aspects of our game. Um, yeah, I think that's the way forward. I like it. Uh, I think the biggest positive to pick from that tournament is the Division 4 tournament is we are champions. You can't dispute that. Um, if the boys can <clears throat> can play around that, can get the momentum from that, moving forward, very many players weren't part of the, the tournament. I'm sure Davis won't bounce back. <laughs> but let's look at people like um, Sebanja, Chobe, Ronak, Shazad. Decent players remain behind. So it's, it's up to the coaching team to realize to make the players realize that the guys who traveled to Malaysia, you did the assignment in Malaysia. I don't assure them of going for the division team. Let's all soil ourselves and get the best team. Whoever doesn't deserve to be part of the team to play division three, you won't make it. So that we get the best of the best players to represent us. Our batting has been a problem for a very long time, but our bowling has always been bailing us out. Going into deep three, we don't we need to we, we need to I mean we can't rely on Roger anymore. He's, he's the captain now, he has to bowl those last overs where he needs to win us games. We need to we need to find a solution now, sooner rather than later. Otherwise we'll never progress to to, to, to deep to as we want to. What, what do we do? Do we look? Is Mitch going to help Mitch? I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, hey, are you going to help us? I mean, <clears throat> what do we do? Well, I feel uh, Uganda, as I've said before, Uganda is one of those very, very few international teams that actually will have their bowlers win them eight out of ten cricket games. I think uh, the higher you go in terms of standard, uh, that that statistic must keep getting lower. I don't. You play on better tracks. Uh, the batters have to come. The but anyone that knows uh, the Uganda squad that went to Malaysia felt uh, we were thin in our batting. It was it was, it was, it was an obvious thing people that were aware of. But I feel, uh, as, I, as Alan said, and as I pointed out, I think the resources that we had left back here in Uganda, I think uh, there are a couple of batsmen there that uh, maybe Runak, Shazad, Mitch himself, Chobe, I wasn't on the tour. I feel uh, you, you have guys that can actually, if, if they're informed, they can get into the side and get, get Uganda to win games through their batting. Mitch, how do you deal with that batting problem? I think, uh, as I see the team structure at the moment, that 3-4-5 position hasn't been filled for a very long time. And uh, th- those are the those are the positions that can actually build an innings for you. You know, we've had, we've had openers that can get us to a point, and then all of a sudden, we're asking the all rounders to come and do the job that a batsman should do. You know, like um, Brian batting three and four. Like Brian's a fantastic batsman, but if you ask Brian, I'm sure he'd be saying, "I'd rather come in once these batsmen, like set batsmen, have built our platform for us." So I think, um, yeah, finding that maybe I think the four position. Is definitely one that we need to look for that solid batsman, someone who knows how to play play both sides. You know, if they're two for ten, he needs to come in and make sure he, you know, graphs and builds that innings. But if we're two for 150, he also needs to be able to play the shot. Mm-hmm. Alan uh, Lloyd unfortunately got injured in Qatar, but he's someone who needed for a very long time. We thought he would properly fit into the side. Do you think he's someone that is missing at the number four slot? <clears throat> um. Going by statistics, I think Lloyd is, is decent, but he hasn't he hasn't delivered for Uganda the few times he's gotten the chance. I mean, we won't blame him. Yes, one chance. <laughs> <laughs> the, the trial game before, before the division, he didn't put up a decent performance. But the as I said, me I believe in the boys down here. Let Lloyd fully recover. I don't know when he'll be fit enough to play again. Then he comes and tries to show us what he can do. Then the boys down here. Chobe didn't go, Shazad didn't travel. We have a decent team. We have a very decent team. If the boys are in for it, they pick the right players on four, we shall deliver. I'm very sure, sure. Davis, who would you pick? Who do you want to have? Who is your, what is your ideal top order for you to survive in Div 3? Considering how the wise of the Oman guys are bowling and Singapore was okay because I mean, I remember we even beat them. The US was at all that, but in the US game, if I had someone who had built a platform for you guys to come at the end and you know, just knock off the remaining runs, we could have easily won the game. Let me give you a couple of players yeah. that I feel could be that in, in those kind of positions. Then, depending on who is on form, maybe then mm. that could be said. I think uh, Roger, Roger is okay in this top four. Roger, Lloyd, Joe, I think Hammer's done a decent job. Ronak's a good enough player. I feel. Uh, a guy obviously like Shazad. Shazad is literally a massive match winner for Uganda. I feel mm-hmm. with those couple of guys, depending on the guys that are on top. Oh, Shazad's 
such as that uh, no, Simon Cesar, I think he has, he has made decent results <coughs> to the past, so I feel uh, he is a guy that can also be considered. I feel out of those seven, you can pick the top five that I informed them. We could go with those. All right. Jackie, the cricket cranes are two divisions away from the World Cup. Do you think we can, we, we can make the, the ten, 10 team World Cup? Yeah, I, it, anything is possible, like we say in Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> Anything is possible because if you take an example of, of Roger Federer, who knew he would come back with such a great performance. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But, so, comparison. <laughs> <laughs> but Roger Federer was number one at one point. It's like saying again, it was number one. We can get back there. If you put so many things in perspective, his age, the new people at the moment were joining the tournament. Class is permanent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think Uganda can still make it. Besides uh, being prepared physically for a tournament, it also goes to say that your mind has to be ready for it. Yeah. yeah. So I think the mental status of the players. As a team, player, if you as a so <laughs> <laughs> I think they all have to be prepared mentally and physically because if you give a moment like the scenario of Uganda playing Denmark, yeah, at that you moment, prepare, then, you, if you're the team as a fan, I would want to know what Roger was thinking in the moment, like what was going through his, his mind, yeah, and for his mind to be in a different place, he would be able to do what he did, yeah, so I think Uganda can make it, it's just that we don't want to be in that comfortable position that, oh, we are champions of G4, so we are fine, yeah, you have to be on pressure. 24-7 to do better, to want to do better. Yeah, yeah true. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Daisy, for coming through. We thank hope you. to have you here again and keep supporting Uganda Cricket. Oh, and there are very many teams besides to never be here. I know they scared <laughs> with don't me. Know that, don't know that. <laughs> 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 There's one there else. Uh, yeah, I think they play on carpet. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Always wondering. <laughs> Meet is real hate. But thank you guys. Um, that's uh, the end of our show. We were at Cafe Ceylon near Panamera. Um, next time, we hope to be here again to talk about the local league and everyone playing in there if you want to know about them. Uh, until next time, keep watching the show and keep swinging. I got like